Hey everybody. First off, uh, I want to thank Tide Wee for paying for the show. If you need a pair of boots, a pair of waders, a new backpack, uh, some hunting rain gear, look them up. They got some good stuff. Look at how many human tracks there are. And the snow's only been on the ground for a day. That's a huge deterring factor for a lot of hunters, but not for me. Parking lot full of guys, guys out here all over the place. That doesn't scare me away because if you're hunting where those people hunt, you're not killing deer. So these people that say hunt weekdays, hunt, you know, just before the weekend, Thursday, Friday, so that you get away from people, then you'll kill deer. I think they're all wrong. I think those big bucks live in little haunts where people don't go. And it doesn't matter how many people are out here. It just matters that there's a big buck that I want to kill back here. Because if he's here, he found where they're not. And that's what I got to do. So all these tracks and all these hunters won't deter me. When I listen to other people talk about their frustrations hunting public land and going for long periods of time without seeing deer and uh, wanting to give up, I think the main reason those people struggle is because they're having a hard time grasping the overlooked spots, hunting the crazy spots, and going where people don't go. And the best way to describe that is dating the fat chick. Back when I went to high school, all the guys wanted hot chicks. And there's only a few hot chicks and a lot of guys. So the cute chicks, the hot chicks, the skinny chicks, however you want to call them, had all these guys after them and they knew it. So they're a little snobby, a little high maintenance, and they didn't treat you all that great. But the chubby chicks, on the other hand, they treated you good. They're just glad to have you around. They were fun to be around. They wanted to do fun things. And it was just an overall better experience except for one thing. And that one thing is, you sure didn't want your friends to see you with a fat chick. Well, believe it or not, that's a lot like hunting whitetails. If you hunt the spots that look hot, the ones that got the hot sign, the rubs, the scrapes, stuff the deer are probably doing at night, and you hunt like everybody else, you're going to get results like everybody else. Sometimes the best spots to hunt are the spots where you'd be embarrassed to have your friends see you in the tree. And that's what we're talking about in regards to hunting when we tell you to date the fat chick. So I really wanted to drill home the dating the fat chick concept and help you guys become better hunters by looking at what you should be concentrating on. You can't talk about dating the fat chick without talking about the parking lot phenomenon and the way people think. A lot of the time hunting is a psychological game. It's a mind game. You got to look at how people think. And most people go to a parking lot and they think in their head that people are going to look at them like they're dating a fat chick if they hunt next to that parking lot. They're going to go out their ways. A lot of guys think they got to get really remote. Some guys will get halfway back there. Some people will get all the way back there. Some people go out, uh, you know, a quarter mile and then turn right or turn left. But hardly anybody parks in that parking lot, walks down the road, and hunts right beside the road. I'm sitting on public land in hill country in central Wisconsin. I'm only about uh, three or four hundred yards from the truck, but I had to go through a long route to get here in a big circle, um, so I'm not walking up and down the deer trails. Uh, there's a ridge here that runs alongside the entrance, the public entrance, and. Uh, 
right above the public parking. There's a big point that the biggest buck in here usually beds on. Nobody hunts up there because they, they go past it when they enter and they don't turn around and go back up there. So that buck is watching when you enter. One of my very largest bucks. I spotted that buck glassing from a parking lot from a major hunting parking lot. Saw that buck with binos, watched him day after day. It was a horrible spot for the wind. Going in there was hard. So I stayed back and waited till things were right. I watched that buck and another buck that was a 10 pointer in the 140s come out constantly and work his scrape evening after evening. I needed a particular wind to hunt that, a just off wind because the buck was only coming in on a certain wind. So he was only bedding there on a certain wind. So I would watch that buck and pattern him. I had a station wagon with a I break for raccoons sticker on it and I dressed in preppy clothes that I don't normally wear and would sit in the parking lot reading a newspaper when somebody would look at me. And when the buck would come out and nobody was watching, I'd watch him with my binoculars and I got a pattern going. Okay, it's just about sunset and I'm getting ready to go uh glassing for deer. Uh, I got my binoculars and uh, here's my truck. I got my uh, forge sticker on there, my camo, my huntingbeast.com but uh, it's not the vehicle we're taking. Um, as most of you wear camouflage when you're hunting for the deer, uh, I use camouflage for other hunters when uh, I go glassing and tonight we're taking my camouflage vehicle it comes it's a, a Ford station wagon and it comes with animal rescue stickers and uh, I break for raccoons <laughs> you uh, really want to keep other hunters from uh, figuring out where you're hunting. Um, if they see your truck parked in a spot and see you looking out the window with binoculars, uh, they're going to figure out something. They're going to start looking to see what you're seeing. So uh, keeping it on the stealth side is a good idea. And then when everything was right, I finally moved in for the kill. But I never ever went in there to scout or, or anything or set up. I waited till the day I was going to hunt. And that's important. You get your sentinel, they figure you out, right? So the day I hunted, I went in there, got in early, looped all the way around, way out onto the public and back, so that I didn't disturb the area alongside the road where this buck was bedding. And I had to get into this crazy willow tree, six feet up, and lay into the tree to hunt. The first buck to come out was a 140 class 10 pointer and I watched him come out while I was glassing many times. And he crossed this little ditch through the water, comes walking up to me and I'm laying into this willow tree trying to blend into it, trying to use my bow to cover my face and the thing gets walking straight at me, staring at me in that tree, walks up to about five or six yards and then abruptly turns and walks over to the scrape and starts working the scrape right beside me. And I'm thinking in my mind I should shoot this thing. That's a beautiful buck. But I just kept thinking, I know that bigger one's here and usually he comes out right after him. Or with him. And I couldn't see any sign of any other deer and I'm watching that deer walk away thinking I'm crazy. And when he's just about out of sight and I'm looking over there, I see a ripple move in the water in the ditch in the little creek and I turn my head and here comes the giant and he crosses the river does the exact same thing and I was shaking in my boots as that thing was walking up to six feet staring at me it felt like he could see me and he hesitated at six feet staring at me in that tree and I thought for sure he was going to bolt at any second but he just flicked his tail turned and walked over to the scrape and as soon as he was busy, I got the bull back and drilled him. And he only took one jump. 
looked around and just fell over. It was the greatest feeling ever. I set up on that thing's bedroom, did everything right and killed it, and it was a giant, and I was literally within 100 yards of the major parking lot where everybody parks. It was a mutant. You know, speaking of fat girls in high school, do you remember that guy in high school that was like eight feet tall, this wide, and you're like, oh my God, what does his family feed him? That was that buck, a mutant. It was a mutant. <laughs> Bucks aren't always where people expect them. A lot of times they're in little isolated spots that are really hard to hunt. They have nasty trees or no trees. And you got to find a scenario that works. You got to get in there and hunt an area that's unhuntable. And most people don't grasp that. The reason that's a good spot is because nobody goes there and hunts. And when the spot's overlooked like that because it's a really hard spot to hunt, because the trees are crazy, because there's no cover or whatever, the bucks realize that and they go there. I can remember way back finding one of these spots, looking out on a map thinking, geez, where are the bucks on this property? Looking all over the place. I knew they were there. I get trail camera pictures of them. You see the sign, but there's hunters everywhere. And everywhere I looked, there was hunters. So one day looking at this map, I see that there's this little section right behind the houses of just thick brush. And I'm thinking, maybe they're coming from there. So you had to walk across this big open area to get over there. And I get over there, and it is just a wall of thick you got to push through, rip your arms up with briars and stuff. But I push through, I get in there, and the thick stuff is up about this high. I had to duck down a little bit to get underneath it. But when I duck down, I can see a wide open area, and there's deer beds everywhere. And I'm sitting there, and this is just before hunting season, and I'm looking and I can see shed antlers laying all over the place. That's the kind of spot you're looking for. If there's shed antlers laying in there from the year before, ain't too many people looking at that spot. Now when you look at these little tiny trees where you get way up there and you've got to get your body in line with this little tiny tree, get your body pressed up against it so that that deer doesn't see you when it walks out, you're going to feel like a fool. You're going to feel like, man, I wouldn't want any of my hunting buddies to see me here because they're going to think I'm an idiot. And I guess only see part of that bean field. And I said, I couldn't, wasn't sure if there was a deer or not. But then I see seen, seen the flag wave. Mm -hmm. I said, he seen another one, and there's three of them standing in the corner. So I'm like, well, I don't know. I thought it was a doe, some fawns. But then he, he went up, bigger one turned his head. I could just see a big mean beam turn with him. Mm -hmm. And he started heading, heading north, walking with the wind. There's only one tree there to hunt. Yeah, you that's know. a hard tree. Yeah, and it's hard and it'd be a fire poke. Yeah. You know, it's so... So that's right on that uh, bean field we planted? Yeah, it's right they're in the bean field. Okay. Like I said... Yeah, I it's got that bedding right over the hill from there. And I'm not sure if they came up the observation stand, but that's the south wind, you can't hunt that, so you're pretty much... Well, the, th the thing is, you kind of got to hunt that observation corner there, and if they walk by it, that's great, but then you can at least see where they come out. Yeah, but I figured they're going to bust you, smell you. I think they know the drill how to get out there. Yeah. So I was just... I could go in there with the mobile system and hit right in that yeah, corner. Yeah, exactly. That's why, that's why I called you. I said, you can get to that corner we're talking about. Yeah. And you can slide in there. Because uh, I think I seen seven, seven last night and uh, just sitting. And I'm pretty sure half of them, most of them are bucks. So, okay. But it looked like every one was coming out of that bean field. They go like that and they'd head to that weedy field. You know? Well, let's go hit it. Yep, let's get them. He's going to go down to the little low spot where the light is. We got a food plot that goes up between the two woods. He's going to go right around the corner and get in a tree right over there. I'll probably be able to see him from the tree I'm in. I think I'm going to be in that tree up, up there, that big one. Um, I'll look at what it looks like when I get up there. This is where Dave saw the bucks come through yesterday. They came through right here and into the neighbor's property. Out of here through our bean field. This is our uh, food plot. He's hunting down there. He wanted me to set up in that tree there, but 
that's a 40 yard shot at best. Not ideal, and I'm not that good of a shot for those long distances. They could also come out over here, which I've seen in the past. So I actually set up in this tree right here. One stick up, dating the fat girl. I'm just gonna use that uh, vine for cover. It's a dead tree about to fall. That tree just above the seat is only this big around where I got the camera arm on. Um, but I think that's where I need to be and I'll just have to shoot quick before they notice me up there. There's one trail comes through right here, one trail over there a little bit, and one that comes along the beans and into the neighbors. So, I don't know exactly where they're coming from, but I did see some real big tracks coming in and out over there from over there. So that gives me an indication that they might come from that way. So we'll see what happens. Wow, it's a crazy setup. And, uh, I accessed it like this, and the wind is like this coming at us. And it was the same wind yesterday when he saw the bucks up here. So this is kind of a crazy spot for uh, getting away with a hunt. I got these vines for cover. And I actually cut some branches and stuck them in here too to add a little more cover. And if I can blend in for long enough to get a shot through here and just stay still, I think I can make it work. Look at how big around this tree is. Better right out there in that uh, field of weeds and uh, beans. From that view, I'm just standing up here skylighting. I'm surprised I got so close. I don't know how it looks on camera. I had it zoomed all the way back because I couldn't really move or see the lens. But uh, that lead doe walked right into shooting range. Looks like a little buck just come out of that grass about. Uh, 80 yards from me up there, eating the beans. Hopefully the big one's following them that, that Dave saw yesterday. got up out of that uh, CRP grass by those little trees, came out fed, went back in and now it's headed for Dave.
buck chased the doe on fawns away. to tell but that one in the back kind of looks like a shooter. Did you see the tree I got into? Yeah, it was funny. wasn't the tree you expected, was it? No, I said I, I see, thought I seen something going up that dead old tree. I'm like, no way. That tree was this big around, yeah. and uh, I was one stick up, and I got in that little patch of vines. Yeah. Looking at the tree where you wanted me to go, it was probably a 45-yard yeah, pole. pole. It was, kind of yeah. Just, I didn't. I feel comfortable with yeah, that, but I thought I, I could uh, get in that tree, and I thought I probably won't get noticed if they come from where I expect yeah, them. Yeah, that's a. I don't know. So for me. Um, I didn't see nothing for a while. Yeah. And then about five o'clock, yeah. uh, I looked back over my shoulder, and a doe stood up in the bean field and, on uh, the neighbor's property, uh, right yeah. in the middle of the patch of oh, the right. grass yeah, and yeah. beans. Yeah, that's right. And uh, then a fawn stood up with her, and they started walking right to me. And from that view, I was completely skylit, yeah. standing on that platform with no cover. Yeah, I know, just a stick. So I just right. stood there perfectly still, and she was coming and coming and coming, and she'd look at me. And she'd come and come and come and come, and then she got to about, uh, say, 30 yards. Yeah. Then she just didn't like it. No. And she just kept looking at me, and she'd look at me, and I just stood perfectly still. And, uh, you know, I'm just, that tree is this big around, <laughs> and there's no cover from yeah. that view, you know. Yeah. So finally she turned around, she trotted into the swamp, and then the, the fawn looked around. She didn't know what was going yeah. on. She didn't even know I was there. Then she trotted into the swamp. So then I turned around, and it wasn't five minutes later, uh, something gets up in that CRP in the middle of uh, that heavy grass and the hill slope. All right, on, in my eyes? Yeah, just okay. uh, just uh, this side of the uh, bean field, in the grass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I right. can't see it, the grass is so high, but I can yeah. see it moving. Then out pops a year and a half old buck. Yeah, here we go. Starts eating for yeah. a while. Then he turns around, goes back in, heads towards you. And then I see one get up near me, but I can't make it out. I can just see something moving in the grass. You get a yeah. piece here it's a, or there, it's a deer. It went straight for you. So then a little while later, another one pops up in there, and he comes popping out by me. Starts eating beans. Eating beans forever. He's there forever and ever okay, and ever. Good, good. So and I had to turn the camera off a couple times. A little, yeah. little crappy rag. Yeah, yeah. Well, he got well within range. First one, him and the other buck. I'm sitting there in that vine patch, you never noticed yeah. me. Yeah, it's going to shot them both. That's crazy. So he finally, uh, he's, he's eating, he's making his way back in to head back towards you. But then I see something, it's just starting to get that, that lower light. Yeah. Something comes into the corner and looks pretty big, and I'm thinking, yeah. hmm. But then two little ones pop out, and I think, oh, it must be a doe and fawns. Yeah. And yeah. they start getting closer and closer, yeah, it's a doe and fawns. I was able to zoom in with the camera, right. doe and fawns. Well, the buck sees the doe and fawns, and he rises his head up, his tail wags a little bit. And he goes frolicking after him and chases him into the brush. Yeah. So they they ain't 
gone a couple minutes and you hear brush crashing in there and then I'll, I'll, I'll pop one. And I figure it's them again and I look and then no, oh, I can make out a rack. Alright, yeah. So I'm like looking, looking, and then another one pops out and puts his head up and you see a little bit of a rack. Alright. So they start making their way down towards me but I'm losing light. Yeah. I'm able to film them across the field. I don't know what we're going to see on the film because it was in low light. Yeah. All right. But I had camera light. I could see the field in the, the camera. Uh -huh. light. So I just kept it on them and just stood there waiting. And, and they made their way all the way across the field. And then I lost camera light when they were getting right up to me. Oh. So I just turned the camera off and swung yeah. it around me. But I still had shooting light and they came right underneath me. And one of them was tempting, all right. but not quite a shooter. All right. And the other one was pretty tight. And I think they're both two and a half year olds. Okay. Bigger than the first two, but yeah. not quite what we wanted to shoot. Um, the one was tempting, though. Yeah, well, it's but uh, I let them go, and uh, they walked back in that way into the woods. Yeah. And the one waited around for quite a while before he walked in, and then he stopped for the longest time. And then I finally I figured he was gone, but when I was getting down, he trotted off. Yeah. But the bigger one had already been gone. Yeah. It's but uh, I could have shot any of those. Except for the dome fawn that had me bare naked in that tree. And what was it? This high? <laughs> like, I was filming. Yeah, I, 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 I knew you were I was, laughing. I was laughing. I knew, from, like, you know, I knew. Dave could see me here and he's yeah. laughing. But yeah. uh, I had a little patch of vines in that other tree. Yeah. And that ain't going to last long and those leaves are going to fall off. But, yeah, but from the field view, I think I was pretty concealed. But they'd get in spots where it was me, but I'd just line up with yeah, that I'd little watch, tree. I could sit watch you trying to sight behind it. <laughs> you can see that, eh? Like, <laughs> and something was going on. But really, there hasn't been any humans sent there. There hasn't been any humans bothering these deer there. When they come out, they're not expecting you. So most of the time, they're not going to notice you. With that said, I do get busted a lot under this concept. I've had deer come out and see me. Had them look up, spot me, and you try to get a shot, and they take off. most part if you're not used to people and you blend in you get away with it but you got to take some chances you got to have that aggressive attitude or you're never going to kill big bucks repeatedly and you got to be able to take it when those deer run off and just laugh about it a high percentage of the big bucks I've shot have came out of little tiny trees bent trees crooked trees sometimes you can't pick the perfect tree and he's got trails going through here like this. I'm standing in a bed. There's a big bed right here. And uh, look what we got for trees out here. I mean, they're all bare naked and stuff. So, people are asking how I set up in this stuff. Here's one stick. A stick and a half. And I'm in my stand. I can almost reach my stand from here. And I just have to blend in with a couple sticks and the tree trunk. And shoot him when he goes along here or along here. The wind's coming like this, he's bedded right along there, if I'm correct. This is what I was talking about, the stand here's the bad way. Only the end blade is in the tree. I mean, this tree's really crooked. You wouldn't get any kind of stand in here without a bat wing. You can just see trails going through here everywhere. There's a bed right underneath the tree here that's got a big rub in it. There's a giant fresh rub right over there. Heavy trails coming in from every direction. So we're kind of in the bedding area, but we didn't kick anything coming out. And I think they're a little deeper now with less cover in that stuff over there. And that's where I heard them move yesterday. I've hunted them on the ground. Sometimes you got no choice, you got to get off the ground like this. 
because there just isn't trees in here. You know, it's just brush. And this is where you got to be to get them in daylight. It's kind of funny because it's such an overlooked spot. Right there where you see the light through those trees is the road. That's about 80 yards. And I just had two people walk a dog past. And the deer are bedded right over there, I'm sure of it, right by that pine tree. And they're going to wrap around this corner here. And hopefully they keep their attention on the road where people walk. But, um, you know, this tree here would have been perfect. But it ain't here no more. <laughs> so instead I'm hiding behind this uh, deadfall. And you can see where all the deer are going through here. Even a big one over there. See his hair were pulled off in the briars. So when they come out, I'm going to try and get a shot right through here. Or over here, but the wind's blowing like this. It's just off or over there. But they might come out of there, too. There's some good bedding over there, but I'm expecting them over there. It might be my last stand. Hopefully we see something. You got to do what you got to do to hunt the deer where they're at. Hunting them where they're not is not going to do you any good. People got to get out of the mindset of going to the woods and looking for sign like they see on TV or they read magazines. You got to get more in the mindset of where are people not looking for the deer. Where are the deer hiding on people? I'm set up about uh, 10 feet high in a little swingy tree. We got heavy winds today. I'm right on the edge of a bedding area, snuck right in. The one thing is, most people's equipment is not built for mobile hunting, is not built for getting in a little tiny tree, is not built for that kind of hunting. And making something that's not built for it work often leads in disaster by making noises or having a, a, a loose fitting stand or stick slipping around a tree on you. All right, so I got the stand set up as quiet as I could. I got up uh, 
three little short sticks and there's the stand. It's about uh, 10 feet off the ground. I'm expecting movement to come up these trails right here. But also from over there, the wind is blowing that way. So if anything over here gets past me, it's going to smell me. So I have to shoot it out there. I don't know anybody thinks they, they could uh, set up in these bedding areas with a climber. I mean, look at these trees. This is what I have. This is the tree I need to be in. Look at this. It's that big around. There's a deer trail right there that's real heavy. There's a couple of real heavy ones that come in through here and some big rubs right there. I suspect they're bedded right over in there. Make sure you got good equipment. Make sure you know how to use it. One thing you can't have is you can't be sticking out from the tree. If you're sticking out at all, those deer are going to see you. When I have a deer come in, what I do is I get my back against that tree, and if it's a real small tree, I turn sideways. I get that sideways profile, like this, in line with the tree. So it's just a little tiny profile when the deer looks up there. And he might look and not even move. And if I, if I go like this, I can take that bow, I hide my face with the cam and the limb, and I'm just ready. And I'll let that I always try to face the deer. So when that deer is coming, as soon as he turns broadside, I slip back and I shoot. The longer you have that deer around you, when you're in an open tree, in an open scenario like that, the longer that deer's around you, the more likely he's going to see you. Sooner or later, the gig's up. So I want to face that deer, and the first moment he gives me an ethical good shot, I'm taking it. If you're hanging out of the tree, that little tree this big around just became this big around blob up in the sky, and that deer's going to see you. you got to blend in with the cover. Dating a fat chick today. There's a highway right in front of me. I'm hunting right next to the highway. There's a hiking path behind me there. And uh, I think the deer are hiding right in this little section here. Next to the road where nobody looks. Uh, pretty soon I ain't going to have any leaves in here. All this is is uh, box elders. They're all leave losing their leaves. I am in this little tree here. Five sticks up, trying to look like a branch. Well, the upside is I won't have far to track them, and uh, it won't be far to drag them out of here. I just had a couple of joggers go by. Here's that river crossing. Look at that. That is just beat. where he was when I hit him. There she is. A lot of times these spots are not pre-scouted. I heard about a buck. I'm going to go hunt it. I'm hunting a buck and I think he may be over here and I haven't scouted that area. So I'm going to go in there kind of blind. 
and guessed. I'm going to look at aerials. I'm going to kind of guess where I think that deer's bedding, and I'm going to inch in as close as I can to kill him. Look at that uh, big rub there. That thing's way over the top of the grass. That's high. Bedding's right over there. I'm expecting them to come this way. But there could be deer bedded here. This is uh, kind of a gamble sneaking in like this, but you really don't have much of a choice. Got to get in here somehow. So I'm trying to slide in the best I can based on the wind. One thing I like to do is walk with the wind to my nose in a straight line to the area I plan on hunting. And the reason I do that is because you have one scent trail. You don't have a scent trail of walking, a ground scent trail where it can cross, and an airborne scent trail. You have one scent trail. So now there's only one spot where that deer can bust you. Now that don't work in every scenario, and it don't work in a just off wind, but it does work in a lot of scenarios. And it's a good tactic to use. Now when I get in there and I get close, I stop from a ways back. I don't go wander in there, wander all over the place, look at the sign, go, oh, there's a scrape, there's a rub, oh, look at this, look at that. I sit back from a distance, and I, I scan the area. I'm looking at where I'm going to walk. I'm planning my path for two reasons. For one, so I'm not making noise. Number two, so I'm not walking where deer walk. Because last thing I want to do is have small deer spook and spook the big one on me. I think this is a good good position if I got in here clean. I don't know if I'm spooking animals or not, but if the, if the uh, movement comes from where I expect and I can find a decent tree, I think I got half a chance. So then as I'm moving forward, I stop every here and there and I'm looking. I'm looking for the right tree. A lot of times from a distance a tree looks good, or you can see an area, I need to be in that area. Then you inch a little closer. Then you say, okay, that's the tree. Then you get over there and maybe, uh, I don't know, that's not going to have cover. It looked like it had cover back there. Here it doesn't. And you got to fine tune. But as you're moving in, you're slowly moving into siding until you narrow it down to the spot you need to be and you go in there. A lot of times there's an exact spot you need to be, an exact tree. And that's where you got to be. We got the uh into this little tiny tree here. His stand is only uh, eight feet off the ground. There's a little hole over there and a little hole over there. And there's a rafty sign coming out and all this stuff is browsed down. And I'm gonna go around on that side. There's a veterinary over there. So it's a matter of not bumbling in and going to that tree and then saying, oh crap, I should be in that tree. And that's uh, a situation a lot of new hunters will get in. And they're indecisive. They bumble in there too fast and kind of blow it on themselves. In some cases, there's no tree where you want to go. Ground hunting can be a good option. Um, this last season, Mario shot his buck, um, real nice buck, on the ground, right at the entrance into the public area he was hunting. Right where everybody walks you, right along that trail where everybody walks, he set up and shot that buck on the ground. And that buck didn't expect it. They're used to when a person walks through there, they walk past, they give it a little time, they step out, walk around over there, and then they're fine, right? What they didn't expect was somebody to slide in there and just stop and move over and shoot them. We, we've used tripods in the past. Got the big buck sailor killer sitting out on a tripod. This is what I think he yelled. I think he yelled Dan, so I think it's heading this way. We'll see. Maybe he's yelling for his buddy. What's his buddy's name? Oh, there it is! Run for you! Run for you! Um, carried him out there. So far, most of the ones I find manufactured are real heavy um, and hard to use, and you got to kind of get them into brush if you're gonna if you're gonna hunt. In a lot of cases, with like a bow, you got to get them up into brush. You got to get them into a tree canopy or something. Um, 
they're hard to be mobile with. Um, I've used step ladders. Step ladders are hard to get through the brush quiet, but you can do it if you're careful. Um, stay away from aluminum. Aluminum makes a lot of noise when it scrapes against brush. Fiberglass or wood, if you're going to use a step ladder. Um, we've had some really, really successful hunts on step ladders. So how many deer have you shot? Zero. This is the first one. <laughs> Zero. I think you've got at least one. Bad boy just hopped in the clearing at the wrong time and he got popped. <laughs> uh, now granted, most of them are with gun. Um, but that's because, you know, we know where those deer are and they're where there's no trees. So we put a step ladder out there and then move the deer to the, to the hunter and he shoots them. But we have shot them off of uh, step ladders with guns, just hunting out in the brush. We just get a little tiny bush that you couldn't get a stand in behind you to silhouette you. And the time the deer sees you, he's dead. My son James shot a giant. I think he was 100 yards from the parking lot, and the buck was bedded about 50 yards from the parking lot. Dude, way to go! Right. That's a pig! Damn. All right. Holy. That's a nice one. Holy. <laughs> you definitely blew it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's probably. Holy crap, dude. Holy cow. Look at this freaking moose right here, dude. We know who's doing the driving from now on. <laughs> I knew that ladder was a good spot. That's insane. Holy. That's almost a 12 pointer. He was just starting the 12 points. Holy cow. That is nice. Dude, nice shooting. <laughs> nice nice job, man. <laughs> we'll get a tag on him. We knew where it was bedded, put him on a ladder, pushed that buck past him, and he got it. This year gun hunting, we put Jeff Trudell on a ladder and pushed a little piece of bedding right up alongside the road, right next to a private property, and Nice buck hopped out, only had one antler, but it was a nice buck, and Jeff pounded it. Jeff is shooting at something, I don't know what. I saw a deer running over there. I don't see it now, though. I think he got it, because it never came running out. I, I just saw it for a second run right next to him. I know how he could have missed. I think it's down in front of him. What'd you do? Got me a buck. <laughs> or at least a half a buck. Uh, I don't think that's the one I passed. Yeah, this looks like it's been gone. It, for it actually a looks time. a little bigger than the one that I passed. I have to look at the video, but. Yeah, yeah. he's been missing this one for a while. Yeah, well, that's decent. Good. He came hauling through. You're due. Huh? You're due. I was due. It's been you, a long you, uh, time. You got blood splattered on your face. I got blood splattered, yep. <laughs> you got blood splattered all over you. Oh, yeah. It came so close to Jeff, it almost ran his ladder over. Now, obviously, you get into these areas, you can't disturb them that much or you ruin them. So, you don't want to be cutting limbs, you don't want to be cutting shooting lanes and all that. If there's a branch right in your way, in the tree, or real close, you can cut a branch or two. Especially if it's not too obvious. But number one, you don't want to cut the cover from around you because you're going to have very sparse cover. And number two, you don't want that deer to come out and see something different. They will notice if you cut down a bush. They'll notice if you cut a bunch of branches. They'll smell the activity from you moving around doing that. I try to pick my spots looking in the tree, looking for a tree where I've, I've got an opening to put the stand, I've got cover to the ground, I've got shooting lanes. That's part of that moving in close and picking your tree as you're moving in there, you're looking for, okay, where's the cover on the tree? How high up do I got to be? How low do I got to be? What do I have for back cover? What about that tree? As you're sliding in, in a lot of cases, it's the only tree you could be in. I 
think I found my tree. I don't like it, but I found my tree. It's pretty stupid. It's going to be hard to kill an animal out of. But uh, we'll see. It's an old box elder. I'm up where it's about five inches in diameter. At least it's windy, so any shake in the tree should uh, should not be noticed if I'm really slow about moving. There's a lot of deer sign in here, but I don't know about right at this exact spot, but this is where I saw the three deer when I sat over there. And there's some big sign on the trail coming out of here. So we'll give it a shot. I've run into a lot of scenarios over the years where, where giant bucks live right behind the barn. Right behind the house. Uh, around a construction project. They pick areas where people don't think to hunt. Where people don't go. Where they don't run into human scent. So you can run into them, you know, behind a barn where everybody's hunting back in the back of the farm. You can run into them right behind a person's house when they've got a trail where they walk way out and hunt further back. People got some sort of uh, thing in their head about you got to get really remote, you got to get really far away from people, but deer live right under people's noses. They'll live right in your backyard, they'll live right behind the barn, and you got to look at every part of that hunting property and find the spot where that buck lives. If you're hunting a property and you've got trail cam picks of a big buck and it's not the middle of the night, it's sometime close to daylight, if there's signs of them, there's tracks everywhere, there's rubs everywhere, that buck's around. It's up to you to figure out what spot is he living in that I'm missing. I'm in a little tiny six inch diameter tree, two sticks up. It's like a bean pole, but I got a little bit of, couple branches behind me for cover. And uh, from an observation stand, I heard a buck come through here the other day, and then I seen him go through here the other way the next day. And I'm not sure if it's my target buck or not, but it's a big buck. And, uh, I believe he's bedded right out here. When I heard him come through, I heard him aggressively rub a tree right in this area. And uh, I get in here and there's no trees rubbed. I couldn't find anything, but from up in the tree, I can see there's a cedar tree right over here that's rubbed. And uh, I got the stand facing away from the deer. And I don't like that. I like to have it facing the deer. So I got the tree in front of me, but because of the lean, because of the way the branches are in this tree, I had no choice. And I can't be off to the side or they'll see me. That uh, brush over here, that's out about uh, uh, 80 yards. That's where I think he's bed, and that's where he got up the other day. And then he made his way into these trees here, and then straight down this funnel. got the rub on it at the base. I couldn't see it till it was in the tree. And right here you can kind of see my setup a little better and the tree stops right here. It's like broken off. I got my bow right here. Expecting the deer to come from this way. I got the camera arm here. The seat's right there. And uh, what I did, I'm only two sticks high. Only actually one and a half. But uh, I take the seat and I sit down. I straddle it like this with my knees and then I can just slide to my feet and shoot on either side because I really like to face the incoming deer. And most guys don't hunt like that. They've got their routine of tree stands that they rotate through. If a buck has to be five or six years old, he knows where those stands are. Most of the time when I hunt in a scenario that's got preset stands, 
I don't kill a big buck there. I see him someplace and I move to him and kill him. But when I look at a property, I look at where has nobody hunted yet? Where does that buck have a chance to hide? And that's how I get on big bucks. This is one screwed up setup. But this is where I need to be if I want to kill the buck. All the trails come in right here and into this oak woods, but they spread out and it's real thick in there. So I'm real close to the bedding and hopefully I didn't make too much noise. But I had to get in this little crooked tree and then that tiny tree right there, that tree is uh, about four inches in diameter. It shakes around a little bit. The main trail coming through here and a couple of main trails coming through over there. And uh, I know there's some big bugs hanging around in here. There's some big fresh rubs right back there. Hopefully I didn't make too much noise setting up because it took a little bit to get in here and get up there in all those dry branches and, and crap. But, uh, and it's getting late. It's a long way back here. So I'm gonna get up the tree and get ready. Another thing that's important, just because a spot's sitting off to the side doesn't mean it's great. It's still gotta have the right terrain. It's still gotta be some place where a deer wants to bed. It's gotta have the cover they need. It's gotta have the protection they need. It needs to have an escape route. A good thick spot in the middle of an open field. Maybe it has deer there, but probably not. They want some sort of escape route. A lot of time in flat terrain, those big bucks like a water barrier. They like to be surrounded by water. Shallow water with thick cover within the water like dogwood and stuff, or just a creek or whatever, but they like a water barrier. It isn't just for people. Over time, they've learned that predators and people or whatever all go for them on dry land. Well, there's my tree. Bucks better underneath that tree. They better underneath those trees. Over my boots. Lots of sign coming in here. see how the tree is far from perfect. This is the only tree out here. This is the one I have to hunt out of if I want to kill something. So getting a stand in there, getting sticks in there, I have to be able to get into a tree that's far from perfect. I have to do so quietly, which I did. I didn't hear one deer crash off and I'm right on top of bedding. And there is fresh sign back here, so I'm sure we'll see something. Worst tree ever. <laughs> this thing's on all kinds of angles. It's the only tree out here that, where I can hunt. I gotta be right here. And even this isn't ideal because a lot of the trails are coming straight on at me. And I, I just have to wait till they gotta till they give me an angle to get narrow in. A lot of guys want to take these little areas when they got private land that uh, are thick cover and hard to hunt, and they want to make them into a sanctuary for their land. But in that case, a lot of times, a big old buck will learn not to come out of that area in daylight. And all you're ever going to get is trail cam pictures. And, and maybe you have one or two chances if you hit it just perfect in the right tree in the right spot on the farm, he comes out and rut during daylight. No free rides, man. you got to go in there and you got to shake it up. you got to go in there and hunt after him. If you don't hunt it, he can just live there forever for free. You want him to live free? If you're going to feed them, you're going to put food plots out and stuff, and you're going to take care of this deer, don't let that deer be a Democrat. He's got to pay for being on your property. you got to go after him. you got to go back into those little spots and try it. Now, that doesn't mean you go rape it. It doesn't mean you go in there and you just hunt the piss out of it and chase that deer across for miles out of your property. But when the time's right, you make a calculated move and make one hunt in there. One hunt. Don't burn it up. It's still like a sanctuary. These guys that leave it alone completely, 
Then they go in there looking for sheds. You're still going in there. You're still interrupting the area. One hunt is not going to kill you. Coyotes run through there occasionally. You shoot a deer, it runs in there. You go in there and you fetch it. One hunt or two hunts in a season is not going to kill that spot. Just make sure the timing's right and you do everything right. That's how you're going to kill your biggest bucks. Not by sitting back waiting for them to walk to a food plot. No free rides. So most of my bucks come from these crazy type trees and stuff. These aggressive moves. Look at this year's buck. This year, a uh, sign was telling me there's a buck living up front near the uh, food plots and stuff, or at least hanging there for a time period during rut. And probably because we had does there. This is a hard spot to hunt because there's hardly any trees. There's like trees in the far corners that'll hold, hold a stand. And in the middle, it's just heavy brush and a couple trees like this. But you also have a wind that any west wind is blowing right towards the bedding area. So west, southwest, northwest, it's a tough spot to hunt. You almost got to have an east wind or a straight north or straight south. The day I went into the hunt, I had been waiting for it. I had finally got a straight north wind. Now this spot doesn't have any trees either. Everything here is immature as you can kind of see by the background and brushy. So um, we were hunting in the corner in a ladder stand over there and that stand is just usually just out of reach and right here is where we see all the, the deer just out of reach of that stand. And I got this little leaning tree here and I got my stand up there and I really got no back cover. So I'm going to have to just kind of lean into that tree and become the tree when a deer comes out. And I can shoot around on that side and I can shoot around this side. So, probably not a good spot for a permanent stand because once they're looking for you there, they'll see you. But I think I can kind of fat girl it and blend into that tree and uh, get away with a hunt here and maybe even have some success. Yeah, he's down. He is down. <laughs> oh, nice. That tree was a crazy tree. It had bends in it. It, had, it was small. I had no back cover. I had to get in there, get the tree beside me. I couldn't hang out from the tree at all. Couldn't get it out from that tree at all. And because of the angle of the tree hanging over the, the food plot, which is normal, trees grow towards the open areas. They grow towards the light. So a lot of times on the edge of those open areas, you have those angling trees out that way. So I had to put the tree stand on backwards and face the tree. And then I sit on the seat, and I have the tree right here and the camera arm right here. So then when a buck comes, I just slip to my feet, and I got the tree right here and the bow right here. And I can just be part of the tree and block my face with the limb. Just sit here like this until he gives me a shot. Now, if you hunted that all the time, deer would smell that you're in there. They'd realize that's a hunting spot. 
But the fact that you get in there once or twice, those deer come through, they've never seen you there before, they walk through, they don't look up. If they looked up, they'd see you. And if they've smelt you there before, they're going to come out and look at that tree. A lot of times, guys will know that those bucks are down in that brush, and then they sit back into the timber waiting for them to come through. But generally, that's a bad idea. If you're too far back, and it's going to take too long for the deer to get there. There's two ways I hunt that. I either hunt right on the edge, where I can see the opening, and I can get them when they stage up to the edge. And if they move in there and they don't come to me, now I can see everything, right? But those trees on that edge are not your typical tree stand type of trees. Those are the crazy trees you got to get into. And sometimes you just got to get down and get right into that brush and get into one of those little trees, especially if you see a deer moving in there that didn't come to you when you hunted the edge. I'm 20 feet up, a little tiny five inch diameter dead ash tree. It feels like it's going to fall over at any minute. <laughs> I picked a spot from an aerial. I'm pretty sure that that big buck is coming through this way sometimes. And uh, coming out here, the sign doesn't disappoint. There's a lot of sign right here going through this funnel. But with that said, there was nothing for trees. I got in this dead tree where they'll spot me in a heartbeat. lot of good hunts by getting into a cedar tree only a few feet off the ground but you cut a little hole into that tree and get your stand on that little bushy tree as long as you're not shaking the tree you got so much cover a deer will never see you in there uh, if they bust you it's usually based on getting downwind of you those cedar trees um, are really underrated that's really good cover and deer are used to seeing that cedar tree every time they walk by they don't think of that blob that they see and you just blend right in. I'm in a little tiny uh, cedar tree. I'm only about 10 feet off the ground. The wind's whipping in from the west, but I can just feel a little bit of north tickling on the back of my neck. And I
it's really about the mental game. It's about being aggressive, having that gr aggressive mindset, not to sit back and wait for it to happen attitude, not to, oh, I saw a buck over there. Hopefully tomorrow he comes over here. It's the attitude and the whole mental uh, game of you see something, you go after it. You keep moving until you kill that deer. Um, you never waste a hunt. You look at it as you only got so many hunts in a season, you got to make each one of them count. And just sitting in those same trees over and over and hunting where everybody else hunts is not going to get it done for you. It's a cold one out here today. It's uh, probably about 8 degrees and uh, I got a steady uh, about a 15 mile an hour wind right in my face so it's probably sub-zero with the wind chill. I got a trail right behind me runs alongside of this uh, spot. A human trail? If you can see it. it runs behind me too and I can literally walk up that human trail that hiking trail and go right up my tree and they're not as spooky here I go into that brush and they just disappear for days last time I went in there nothing moved out here for a week but I can sit right here without bothering them too much unless they smell my wind blowing to them and uh, today I got a perfect wind blowing out I've been waiting for this and we got a storm front last storm front that giant buck was the first deer in in daylight at that scrape. So uh, I'm just keeping my eyes peeled on the swamp and gonna kick back and, and wait. So here's the human hiking trail going through here. As you can see, deer are using quite a bit too. And if you look, 10 steps off the trail, there's my stand. Right there. Watch this. You can see my breath. Usually you can only see my breath when I haven't brushed my teeth for three days. But this team, this time, I think there's a 50-50 chance it's because of the cold. Thanks for watching and remember fat girls need loving too. Maybe if I just grab it by the tail I can aim it the right way right?